Hello, in one of my recent shed videos, someone said you don't have any quick disconnect breakers. And I thought, you're right, I don't. Uh, between the solar panel and the battery and between the battery and the devices which are consuming power. So I thought I'd get one of these, uh, this is a 30 amp DC circuit breakers uh, on AliExpress. They do two types, this one with uh, wire end connectors. And there's another type that's slightly fatter and it has bolt connectors for ring terminals. Uh, this sort of thing. These are very large M12 ring terminals, but uh, yeah, they've got uh, two bolts on either corner, I think it is. So the way this works is that at around 30 amps, um, the contact inside here breaks and it's the equivalent of me pushing this button and then this uh, piece of plastic rotates and there's a little foot inside which is slightly offset from this flag and it wedges itself between the two contacts so even it's a bimetallic strip in here so even when the bimetallic strip cools down it, and attempts to remake the contact it can't so it's a one shot disconnect and then you have to uh, move the lever to reconnect the circuit which is good because you don't want your fuse making and breaking periodically and the convention here as with uh, plumbing taps is that when the lever is in the direction of flow then the circuit is made and when the lever is uh, perpendicular to the direction of flow this one doesn't quite go all the way perpendicular that means the circuit is broken and it's the same with this device. Okay, let's take this apart. There are two screws underneath. One of them undoes and will come out. The other one is slightly odd. It, it just sort of binds and so that one doesn't want to come undone. Now there are four what look like rivet tops here but these are just pins and if you can get your pliers or cutters, cutters probably, uh, underneath these then you can just simply lever them out. Okay let's try that. So this one is the least pushed down. Don't want to damage these cutters but yeah I can lever that up and then it just comes out and there's nothing on there it's just a straight pin that pushes into uh, the plastic underneath but that's enough to uh, hold the lid on. So I'll do the other three Right, let's move the camera down and get a closer view of this. So these are now out. Let's take all of them out. Now the only other thing you have to do is uh, lift this flag thing off its spindle. It's just got a little D-shaped uh, indent there so that it's always in the right position. And then this top piece comes off. So you can see there's no connection between the little push button and the rotating uh, flag and foot under there. The push button presses down on this lever which in turn lifts up the bimetallic strip and thus uh, disconnects one of the contacts from the other. And as you raise that up this um, rotating flag and I don't know whether you can see this but there is a spring which is wrapped around it so that it uh, wants to rotate. As you lift this up the rotating flag, well if, you, <laughs> if the top uh, pivot were on, it simply moves itself between the contacts so then this doesn't come back up. So that gives rise to this sort of brake facility with a one shot this is now wedged between the two contacts so it can't remake contact. Um, the screw that bound up it does it because there's a nut on there so I need to put a nut spinner on there to undo that screw. Uh, but first let's take out this lever which just sits in there like that and that simply is to allow the push button to push in and that in turn lifts up the contact, so that contact is now disconnected from the contact below. The foot has rotated round, jammed itself between the two contacts so they can't remake even if the bimetallic strip cools down. Okay let me undo that nut and we'll take a look at the bimetallic strip. 
Right, I need a spanner on there, 5.5. .5. And now undo this, and it's quite tight. So it seems that it's kind of an interference bind between the screw and the nut. Is that nut off yet? Not for, oh, there it is, right. That's off. There's the biometallic strip. We'll have a closer look at that in a minute. So what's causing that to bind up? Is it actually screwed into the brass block? I think it is, and it doesn't seem to want to come off. So with the biometallic uh, strip contact removed, you can see this screw really didn't want to un unscrew completely out of the, uh, I don't know, brass uh, contact there. It, uh, <laughs> it's very tightly threaded in there, so I perhaps won't take that out. And you can see how the flag, the little foot thing there, wedges itself above that bottom contact. And of course, when this is bent up, there was a little bit of a sort of clicky springiness in this. I can click it like that. It's not obvious that this is bimetallic. I can't see the two different metals. Having trouble getting the camera to focus on this. Ah, oh, there we are. Um, but you can see the, the contact there. Come on, camera, do your thing. And uh, this lifter bar, which is what that lever sits under, to lift that up when you press the little red button. And now if I lift this out, uh, that means getting the spring off its post. I'm not sure how to do that. I'll get some pliers. And so all you can see in here are the two contacts. They're bridged across by the biometallic strip when it's uh, bolted down on here. And I should be able to undo this uh, bolt screw that's holding in this connector. And will that come out? Uh, of course it won't, that's uh, screwed on there, but that should now come out. Yeah, so this is the other side of the contact. It's uh, these two pieces here that make the 30 amp contact. And of course this is available in higher currents uh, let me just check what the maximum current you can get this device in is. Okay, taking a look at this uh, terminal here, there's a, a rubber O-ring on here, so it's somewhat moisture proof uh, with that in there. Although, of course, this lid doesn't have any gasket on it. Uh, where's my little nut spinner? no grub screw remover uh, so there's a grub screw there for tightening the contact and there's also a little reducer in here which you can use or not if you've got a cable that's smaller than that and that's enormous and the o-ring comes away like so and now i thought i'd have a go at getting this um bimetallic strip to bend uh, you can see that it's slightly biased down in the direction of the contact being closed but let's put it in my heat gun here and see if I can make it bend I'm not quite sure how much heat I'm going to need but let's give it a go it should bend up quite a bit Oh, there it goes. Oh, yes, quite bent. Now, well, when it cools down, will it bend back? This is the question. And it does have this um, sort of uh, fold in it or bias in it so that it has a sort of bistable effect. It, it clicked open. Now, when it cools down, will it click closed again? I'll just have to keep the camera running on this and see what happens when it cools down. Will it click closed? Oh yes, it clicked. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, what's interesting is now that I've attached it back in here, the bimetallic strip, it's actually beyond that click point, that bistable point. So it's just 
its springiness that you can feel here. It doesn't actually, it isn't allowed to go down far enough to go past that, that sort of click by stable point. But um, yeah, when it heats up, this will of course lift up and break the contact. And then the foot, which I now need to disassemble all this to put in, uh, simply rotates and puts, it's a little flag, I suppose. The little flag there puts itself between the two contacts. Um, so now when this is hot, I'm not sure whether there'll be any melting effect on this little flag. And therefore, uh, I don't know how many times this will operate before this all starts getting a bit melty. Maybe it doesn't get hot enough to actually melt this plastic. Maybe it's a thermosetting plastic. I don't know. And the problem is now that I've attempted to get that bolt um, out of the big threaded brass contact, it seems to have damaged the thread a bit. And now it's quite difficult to get the nut to engage with the thread to screw down hard on to this uh, contact so that it's uh, making a nice firm connection between the two contacts. But I'm going to reassemble it now and uh, possibly I'll use this one, although I don't particularly like these very fat uh, wire connectors. So I might go for the one with the two uh, bolt terminals with little nuts that you screw down and ring terminals. And now that I've reassembled it for the second time, I hold that foot out, it is clicking, which is slightly strange, um, but you know these things, they're different every time you assemble them, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Anyway, that was a complete take apart of this uh, 30 amp DC uh, thermal, I suppose, because it's got the bimetallic strip. Uh, contact breaker. I will get a few of these and put them in the shed so that um, very quickly, if you want to disconnect stuff, just press the button and it's all disconnected. But that's it for this video, so cheerio.